What do you do when you have a dual Sanitronic 80 that's a total wreck and you have pretty much no real chance of getting it together again because the parts and the labor and all that would simply cost more than getting a whole new machine? Well, you could just get a whole new machine, which is what I did. So my new vac friend, George, who lives near Zanesville, a former Kirby dealer. Hi, George, if you're watching this. We worked out a trade and a little bit of cash. And he sent me home here to Pickerington, Ohio, with this wonderful example of a rebuilt DS-80. It is fully working. I think it's got all the right parts. It is moderately clean. And I've just spent time washing the bag. Actually, I've washed it, I think it was three times. A couple of rinses. Once in the um, washing machine. Twice in the tub. And we're going to do a full restoration of this. Now the aluminum is in not bad shape, but it definitely has some buildup on it. Certainly going to have to go and scrub that off. And we're going to go through the process several different ways. And I've already started recording a whole bunch of different pieces of this. So, what I wanted to do is just some initial tests. That's all. This is a factory rebuild, as you can see from October of 1990. And I have verified that it uses, in its current form, 5 amps. So I have cleaned that brush roll. Actually, I have cleaned the paint right off that brush roll. But no big deal, because I have a whole brand new brush roll. Although I'm not seeing that the new brush roll would really perform a whole lot better, but we'll find out. So, all I've really done is run the nozzle and the interior parts, including the brush roll, and the bag and the empt door, literally in the tub and or washing machine. Well, not that in the washing machine. That would make a racket to try to clean off some of the interior crud. And I wanted to run it for the very first time. I have never run this on carpet yet. I've turned the motor on several times, make sure I got the brush roller going in the right direction. And I want to put it on the airflow box. And I also want to do an initial particle count test to see how well this bag filters. I don't really know how old this bag is. Um, maybe it goes back to 1970. Maybe Kirby replaced it in 1990. I'm not really too sure. It's obviously the right kind of bag. Everything in here, as far as I can tell, is essentially original or maybe an original rebuild. I'm not seeing parts that don't seem to match or the wrong color or the wrong style, but if you have any DS80 experts out there that can spot something that is somehow incorrect or out of place, let me know. But the cool thing is, I finally have a Kirby that's definitely very vintage and does not use HEPA filtration at all. So let's have a little fun with it. And again, I have not cracked the case on this thing and uh, worked any magic on the motor, polished the commutator, checked out the bearings, blah, blah, blah. With the bag completely clean, never used to vacuum anything, let's get a baseline particle test for what's going on in my basement. It was much higher earlier because I was 
moving around and putting a bunch of vacuums together and just making a big general mess. So I think everything's calmed down somewhat. All right, so 13,000 something. Now I want to call your attention to, if you're a new viewer, there's a white vertical bar right there. You notice that's way over to the left in the green column. And that green area means extremely good air. And the fact that that vertical bar is way over in the left, that means you don't need to worry about your air quality. This is, this is fine. I mean, if you're one of those people who want to get a zero count, that's great, but you don't have to. So let's see what happens. I know from pre-testing that vertical white line is definitely going to move to the right. So let's see what it does. So certainly, this isn't HEPA, anything anywhere near HEPA, and it really doesn't matter all that much because that little vertical bar says, this is really, really clean air, but is it like hospital grade, H something or other? No, but that's not that bad, especially considering that bag is, well, the rebuild was 1990 and they put a new bag on. That's a 28-year-old bag. If the bag was left alone, then maybe it's even older than that. So this type of material, I really didn't have any idea how good it would actually be. And that's not bad because that's just, you know, the old style, no bag, so to speak. Well, not like a paper bag or any kind of other high filtration cloth bag. That's just, that's just what it is. So I think it's a pretty good showing for a machine of this age. I always wondered what it was going to be, and this isn't bad at all. Now keep in mind, if you don't clean your bag, it's going to be a giant mess, and I'm sure it's going to blow a lot more particles than that, but after I do a whole house cleaning with it, we can also retest this and see what happens. Maybe it'll stay the same, maybe it'll get dramatically worse. Don't know yet, but stay tuned for a lot of videos on this DS80. Now for the airflow box test. So we have the clean bag, we have the light bulb and it works. And we have the brush roll. Um, I did grease the ends to make sure that it spins fairly freely, although it's probably not perfect. Uh, there's actually a new belt on there and we're gonna leave the brush roll spinning. So let's see what this does on an initial airflow box test. Now we know because of the nature of the bag that when you fill it with fine dust, it's going to clog. I mean, that's just going to be the nature of that kind of bag. But right now, with everything clean, and I checked the motor, uh, it is running at 5 amps. So let's see what we get. pretty good for a machine of this age. So after we convert it, we are at 123.8, let's call it 124 CFM. That's on an initial run, 
Again, I haven't touched this motor or anything like this. I know this machine's been sitting for a while. And I saw on my current meter uh, 5.1 amps. So I think it's a pretty good showing from this machine. Uh, wow, really fantastic. So you see uh, here's an original period hose, I believe. And I've got a suction gauge. So let's do an airflow and a suction test with the nozzle off. To add to my own database, I also do an airflow test where I disconnect the brush roll. So let's see what this does. Uh, it's kind of like a test of how much the brush roll actually drags the motor speed down. So this one should definitely be higher than what we're at, say 124. So hopefully higher than that. I noticed that turning the brush roll off, you know, using the belt lifter, we went from like five some odd amps down to about 4.7. I think it was 5.1 previously with it on, 4.7 amps with it off, and the CFM jumped up to, oh, that's a button, didn't I? 133. Okay, and that would be like, say, straight suction. So on this 13-inch nozzle, it's going to have great CFM density because it's not very deep. 133 CFM, brush roll off. Well, I have this old hose, and it might not be in the greatest shape in the world. But we're going to connect it up and take a peek at it anyway. So, this hose seems to be about five and a half feet long. Pretty sure it's original, so this thing might be 45, 50 some odd years old. And I bet you it's got some leaks. So this machine does run on high, and I did some pre-testing, and it's drawing on high speed a little more than five amps. So let's see what it measures on the verifier. I saw something like 5.3 or 5.4 amps in high speed and the Baird meter seemed to be eh, maybe kissing the five so to speak and that would be about according to my chart um, 85 CFM so maybe a new uh, hose a better connection would probably get a little more than that it kind of surprised me that it was that low I'm pretty sure it should be higher than that but that that is with that is what it is with this old hose. Last test, the suction test at the end of the hose. Will it be 20 inches, 30 inches? I saw on my gauge here about 32 inches. I checked it a couple of times and that's what we got and that seems to be about right. So maybe this hose is tighter than what I thought but the airflow isn't all that hot out of it. But I suppose for let's say it's a 1970 machine um, well of course you know it was rebuilt in 1990 but Let's say it's uh, that kind of genre of machine. Well, 85 hose CFM is probably better than average, you know, if you got something new in 1970.
Okay, let's close this out with some actual vacuuming on medium pile flow through carpet. Now I will say this, I tested it out a little bit and on position three, which is two clicks down from actually contacting the carpet, which is normally what I run all my other Kirby's on, this machine right here, because the nozzle is so small, the airflow density is so high, it's uncomfortable to push in position three. That's probably where Kirby wanted you to use it, but I'm going to run it on position four where it just contacts the carpet. Position four, it was very usable and it still made good contact with the carpet. On position three, mm, it was, uh, shall we say, no fun. All right, so let's see what do we get out of this mTOR. Now, my carpet is very, very clean and I happened to clean it ahead of time with the G6. And as you can see, or maybe you can't, there's just a pinch of stuff that's in there. Let me get the camera a little closer. And that's what we got right in there. So let's see. Uh, right, right here, my finger. That's it. No, it doesn't mean that this D80 doesn't clean. It means that this carpet was pre-cleaned with a Kirby uh, just as powerful, if not more, than this one. So, okay. There's an initial run of everything. Uh, it certainly is a very fun uh, vintage machine to use. It's got a lot of interesting features. And in future videos, you're gonna see me go through and totally clean this thing up. Well, bag's already clean. Detail the aluminum, take a look at the motor bearings and basically go through everything. Oh, and uh, I have some brand new wheels and of course a uh, brand new brush roll to install as well. All right, thanks for watching, and thanks for waiting for one whole year while I figured out what to do with my dual Sanitronic 80. Keep on vacuuming.